gauntlets. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Sean. Go yeah, no, on. sorry, I'm looking for something real quick. Okay, he was looking at something. Good. Awesome. We have time to chat. I was thinking more of the fallout to New Vegas, um, what's it called, man? Yeah. I originally, before I had the idea for Artemis, I originally thought about doing a movie knockoff for the for the uh, HH, the, uh, HHSC. I was having a moment, man. I was just like, how do I change everything? Oh, oh look, there's a HCSF. There's a spider cafe that lets people play with spiders and drink coffee. Uh, Bro. Sounds amazing. You can play with a banana. Is one of like that for kittens? I don't know what, Julian. I hope your kneecaps fall off. There it is. That's they like, probably have already. My legs are in a lot of pain. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry. Bro. Oh, robot, right? Now and they in pain. He talking huh? about real life. <laughs> Yeah. I'm talking about his robot, his legs in real life too, man. He, he football, this kid's killing him. I thought you stopped though. I did stop. This is just weight training. If I went uh, to the football practice, y'all probably wouldn't see me right now. Yeah, it's not even over yet. What do you mean? Until about seven thirty. Yeah, football practice is still going on right now. But you stopped, right? Yeah. Are you ready for some football? See you like that. You're like, yeah. When you say football, do you mean American football or English uh, football? American. Uh, American football. We mean when you catch it. I would play rugby, but you know, it's not like really legal. No, no. <laughs> his uh, football. No, is nobody's softball. nobody's man enough to play rugby. I think I am man enough to play rugby. I just want to live. Rugby is kind of. No, I was taking the piss out of the Americans. Like Don't worry about it. It's a lot less rules than a lot Rugby, is that the game where I get to beat people with a stick? Yeah, that's the one where you get to beat people with your body. No, that's hockey. <laughs> no, rugby's rugby the one where if you mess up, you break your neck. Uh, Why? Kind that of sounds like... fun. That does not sound fun. Rugby's the one where you get shit on by some other player. Like, literally get shit in your face because you yeah. accidentally try to tackle them the wrong way. Yeah. Uh, why would, why would, so that means the person shit on himself prior to that? Yeah, he was running so hard he shit himself and shit on the other <laughs> side. Oh. In, in rugby, the most most common um, injury in rugby oh. is dislocated body parts and broken yep. shoulder and um, shoulders, clavicle, and ribs. noses. What is the reason you why you wouldn't just like put on a mouth guard and just go out there? What are you doing, rugby? There's no pads. Yeah, just put on but the you mouth do. You, it, 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 uh, it, yes, there is. There is. In rugby, you wear a gum shield. You wear a. Um, you, if you're in the front row, you wear a head guard, which is basically a helmet sort of thing. It's a padded helmet, no actual hard armor. And then if, and then you wear what are known as underpads, which are small pads on your shoulders and a supporting pad for your spine. Um, really? Yeah. Any any of I've ever seen is um I I didn't see any of that. No, it's because that's all uh, that that goes all underneath. The um, clothing. I oh, used to really? play rugby. Yeah. Right. Uh, let me you pause this. I'll find you an image. Uh, I was the uh, the uh, the flanker. No, I mean, like, what do you do on a hole in rugby? In rugby? Uh, it, it, it's it, it's a okay. Imagine American football, mm -hmm. except without hurling the ball miles down the line. And, and you played like soccer. And, and yeah, and you're not allowed to just slam into the other person. There's actually a set of rules for tackling people. Well, there's a set of rules to tackle people. You can't tackle somebody that's not holding a ball. And you can't, if you're playing an uh, offense, you can't tackle somebody that's not trying to tackle your uh, ball carrier. Yeah, in, in rugby, you're only allowed to tackle the guy with the ball. Oh, hell no. So I guess I'm never having the ball. There it is. Saying. Yeah, but it, 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 there's also things like scrums and rucks and shit. What is the, these, are, uh, these, are, these, are, these are rugby pads. What is the British uh, sport that's like baseball? Cricket. 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 Uh. It's nothing like baseball. <laughs> oh, no. Nothing like it. They have that in America. They have those same kind of pads. It's an Under Armour pad that you can put on when you're uh, practicing. Yeah. That, that's the only pad you're allowed in rugby. Okay, 
Hey, that was actually right. that's kind yeah. of like that. Hold on, Hunter, no. Get your nose off my books. Why are you beating up my dog, man? Get your ass. What? Why are you beating up on my dog? Pretty sure he your it. dog, man. What you this mean? Is my, this, this is my dog right here, Hunter. Stop. Stop. My half Saint Bernard, half freaking Dalmatian that loves to eat paper. I claimed all those animals a long time ago. Done with you with these. All right, Rashawn, go ahead. Sorry. <sighs> Okay. I got lost in the can of photo. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, Dallas. Yeah. You went to your extended hibernation momentarily after you guys got placed into uh, all the actual Angorians uh, that were fully, I guess you could call it, uh, fully android, were placed in their own separate departments away from all of the rest of the other races. And it's more of a more compact area where they didn't have any of the crowd tubes or what not, where you have to kind of like, uh, you can call it lined up and functional functional rows, and mm-hmm. each one had their own square that was designed to hold the compartment of your body. And uh, that's where you were kind of, that's where you were placed. They don't have any, uh, it was a very quiet room, that it didn't require the mechanics that you guys were into this deep slumber. Uh, the actual frames of humans and Zalorians needed to be moved around and checked on, so that's why they had all the machinery there. But in here, it's mm-hmm. completely quiet. And while you're in your uh, while you're in your deep hibernation, uh, you do notice uh, that you're able to hear. That's one of the systems that were not shut off. So during these years, you're able to listen in as, as some of the actual staff of the, of the Malarkey were coming in and checking on everybody. You begin to hear different talks. Some of the things that you heard of uh, were that you guys had, had encountered a problem uh, with the oxygen recycler, and that was one of the big things a lot of the crew was working on. That's why a lot of work is designated away from the hospitals and from the, from the laboratories and from the actual atrium because they're working on the oxygen recyclers. Um, another thing you did hear of, uh, hear of was uh, one, of the, uh, one of the people from the actual cryostasis had woken up and had uh, wandered, wandered out and it was a big search party that was being kind of admitted out to try to find that person to make sure that they were actually stabilized and uh, in, con- in good condition to be walking around and more along the lines that they want to know how the hell you know they got out of there. Uh, another big situation. Another big situation you did end up hearing it is uh, there is a creature that had gotten loose uh, from the actual laboratory. Uh, they call it the lurker, and uh, that was one of the things that they were doing uh, running tests on. And uh, the staff were a little bit uh, reluctant on their safety procedures. And the creature had escaped, caused mayhem. There were a couple of deaths, but uh, after uh, a couple of hours of uh, them trying to subdue the creature, the creature was subdued. Uh, and one of the one other thing that you did here were um, a couple of the actual uh, Angorians like you uh, that were off to your right. It was off directly to your right where you can hear the conversations. Uh, they're talking amongst themselves, so they uh, had shut their systems back on temporarily to kind of scout around and seeing where they were. Decided that that's where they would decide to actually stay rather than to explore after all the stuff that they've been hearing. Uh, so the two that begin to talk uh, to one another, uh, they. They, more along the lines, were just kind of uh, inquiring about where they came from and, you know, why they were on the ship and whatnot. And you were able to hear that the uh, the first one, he calls himself Gormilly. And uh, he had came onto the ship with a counterpart of his. And uh, they had, well, they were fleeing from Velasca because of it becoming inhabitable. And they hoped that they were able to find uh, safe uh, safe passage in the, on the new planet. And uh, along, along with that, uh, his counterpart, the one that had created him, uh, was also hiding from his family. Uh, his family had had the recent uh, split falling out and they were beginning to have a war uh, amongst his people. And in order to try to get away from the war, he had he had left out and wanted to make his own story. You know, he, he didn't want to be a part of it. Um, the one that Gormilly was talking to uh, goes by the name of Walla. Uh, Walla, he has more of a, uh, Gormilly's more of a, a high-pitched, upbeat type of voice, uh, but Walla was kind of like a foil, like a counterpart. He had a uh, deep, uh, slow spoken, very, very heavy, resonating voice. And uh, Walla was, he didn't remember anything. Uh, he woke up to uh, him being escorted onto the ship. So he feel he thinks that maybe he might have been factoring them. You know? uh, he doesn't have any memories of his own. He's completely android. And uh, as of now, he wants to kind of you know, figure out his own story, and his, own, his own life. And that's where. Uh, what, what was his name? Walla. Okay. I just saw you said Z for a second. I was like, what? <laughs> no. 
<laughs> That'd be ironic. But um, no. Um, you specifically are woken up uh, around the same time that the people are beginning to be woken up from the cryostasis. Uh, there is a uh, Solarian human that greets you, uh, that turns that turns your systems on. And uh, the moment your eyes open, you're able to look around, and the actual facility that you're in is completely empty. Uh, it is about uh, about 1,700 square feet, and not Wally, Walla. Uh, and it's 1,700 square feet. It's a very big room. It's made uh, made of gadolite. Gadolite is a all white ore. And it's very uh, very reflective against the light, and uh, it's covered in these these tile bases across the room. And this is you and this Lauren that are kind of looking, looking at each other as your system's waking up. And uh, he's, he speaks to you. This is Lauren now, and he says, uh, he says, "How are you feeling?" I, uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not locked into this, um, this area, correct? No. My tube or whatever it is. No. Um, so I step forward, you know, and make sure that you know that that all my systems are working and everything as well. <clears throat> Making sure that you know I'm stable, um, and uh, when I look over at him, I sort of stretch. Yeah, and he, he takes like, time to let you to let you know get get familiar with things, and he takes a he takes a step back as you stretch, and just just observes you. You do notice that he is wearing this black, very uh, very thin threaded outfit, uh, kind of like a, a, a skin suit that's kind of sticking to his being. Uh, he's holding a black keyboard. And he has a lot of other pins in his right hand, the keyboards in his left hand. He, he just watches you as you kind of stretch and just take, takes, scribbles a couple things down from the notebook. Uh, and he, he looks at you and waits. Look at him and say, Where are we and when are we? Okay. Uh, he says that we are a month away from our uh, required destination. Uh, we are waking up patrons now so that they can. Uh, Not me. <laughs> uh, so that they can begin to actually. Get their get their motions back and to actually help out with the ship. Uh, the ship has undergo several things throughout throughout passage, and we are looking for a little bit of volunteer service for those who would like to. Those who do not like to are able to uh, hang tight. You know, he like smile kind of reaches on his face. He says that and he kind of lets out a soft laugh as he says, "Hang tight." Um. So, volunteer services. Uh, he says we have several volunteer services that have opened up um, that will be open for the next several weeks. He says uh, the first one is actually being uh, actually helping out with the atrium. Uh, if you know what an atrium, you know what is being held in the atrium. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he says the next thing that we do have is the laboratory, which uh, researchers are needing a little bit of help with the uh, with the specimen docking and the specimen samples. Uh, the same thing in medical as well as uh, the airlock. Hold on, what did you say? Did you say warlock? Airlock. airlock. Oh, airlock. Don't go work in the airlock. Nat one, you go out the airlock. Um, do they have anything else? Uh, he says, he says, aside from that, all the other jobs do not need uh, to be filled. Those have already been filled by personnel. These are the only ones that are, they are allowing uh, civilians to help with. So my options are atrium, help with an airlock, and what else? Medical and laboratory. Uh, what's what? What do you mean by laboratory? Uh, laboratory has to deal with specimens that were uh, that have been in holding. Uh, since our time being on the ship, uh, medical has to deal with actual personnel that come in that need to be treated. Um, I, I guess I can um, see what I can do with medical. Okay. Uh, I, I don't think I want to deal with anything specimen handling. Okay. He speaks towards you and he says that there's, if you do pick the job and it is something that does not fit your uh, do not fit what you had in mind. It is something that you can switch to. So just because you've chosen medical doesn't mean you have to stay medical, and you will be paid upon for help for volunteering. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, when when should I start? He says, "Are you, uh, are you ready now?" I'm always ready. Yeah. 
He says, if you'll follow me out of this door, we will head down to the northern quadrant where uh, we can begin to, where a big meeting is going to be held for everybody that is, going, that is waking up from the prowl, doing the prowl stasis. Uh, we, awake, we woke everybody up at the same time. Uh, the head of the Malagi would actually like to speak to everyone to kind of explain a little bit of what's been going on and see, see how everybody, see everybody's input. Okay, I follow. Okay, yeah, uh, so he, he takes a couple steps forward and kind of looks around at the, at the empty room and uh, he heads toward the door which is centered in the middle, which is the middle of this empty room. And the doors are made of the same godlike structure and as you do approach it, uh, they open up for you. They slide open, uh, the, they slide inward uh, into the actual wall itself. And uh, you guys walk out and you do notice as you are kind of entered into this hallway. The hallway itself is, is pretty big. Uh, it extends, this hallway that you guys are in, uh, it extends out maybe a good uh, 20 feet in actual length. And it extends down almost as far as the eye can see. And you see that the place is full of different personnel. Uh, you see uh, men and women in these white and orange uh, lab coats kind of coming to and from. Uh, you see men who are in these forest green cargo suits who are carrying actual containers uh, as like in multiple groups in and out of different doors on the left and right side of this hallway. And uh, the male, uh, the Solarian male that had awoken you, uh, he begins to walk forward and he tries to make a little bit of a conversation. At first he's looking around like at what everybody's doing kind of making sure people are actually like on task. So you're going to inquire that he has some type of power, uh, or some place, some place of position. And uh, he turns towards you, just like from the side view, and he says, your name. I tell him my name is Neo, that people call me Neo. He says, why do people call you Neo? It's short. And he says, and I assume the other phrase for Neo is a lot longer. Yes. He says, ironically, I find it that a lot of you people have shortened names. You people? He says, you know, and Gordon's. Yes, we, um, we shorten, shorten our names so others can comprehend. He says, are you afraid that people won't be able to comprehend or have you tried? I've tried. And you kind of see he begins to, he grows quiet for a moment as he begins to jot down upon the uh, actual clipboard and he kind of keeps it a little bit closer toward himself as he, uh, as he begins to write down on it. But he raises his head to make sure that he's not running into anybody, making sure that he's still on the right path. And uh, he says, well, he says, what is your reason for heading to the new planet? He says, was life that uh, a little bit for Ingorians? Can't they survive anything? Yes, we can survive most most types of terrains that others cannot. But I'm on the look for someone or something. And it's just, you think that someone or something can be on the new plane? Um, the information that I've obtained um, points me in that direction. And says, I hope that you find what you are searching for once you reach your destination. I hope so as well. Uh, he goes by as he begins to look around, uh, as he begins just observing people as you guys are walking. Uh, the rest of the trip will be a little bit quiet until you reach the actual grand, uh, grand uh, courting room uh, mm -hmm. where the big meeting uh, is going to be held. I'm, I'm going to, you know, also, you know, keep, a, you know, just look around to see if there's anything that's interesting to me. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to describe you a little bit of what. Uh, a little bit more of what you're seeing. Aside from the the Galilee hallway, uh, there are these very uh, vivid uh, holographic images that are popping up on the wall every once in a while. Uh, the first one that you do see is of an air balloon, and it says that the the sky used to be the limit, but not no more. And it, and it says uh, join uh, join all for Argus. Uh, Argus is the new company.
What did I miss? Yeah, I see that. That's about it. Yep. And there were some bees that came in just a few moments ago. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody, I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. watch a video. Someone poke you and the DM wakes up. Hey, hang up the goal. Whenever he wakes up. Yeah.